Hi and welcome back to the channel. So in the last video you saw me fitting these 5 inch spotlights and you saw me running the loom for the 52 inch light bar. That light bar is colossal. When you get the brackets on there it's actually 55 inches. For the crafter that's ideal because that's the distance between the gutters. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Orcs beam you couldn't have got it any better if you tried. So these are both aux beams. Let's give you a little bit of information about them. The spotlights are the VMAX series. They're the side shooters, square pods, and they have dual little windows on the side, side shooters. So what they do is they light up the side of the road and in both directions. They also come with a, an amber daylight runner light. Um, never thought I would need that, but I'll be honest with you, I love the feature, absolutely brilliant feature. Um, it gives your van that little bit of stance, a little bit of presence. I even make that the same colour now. It's, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. These spotlights, as a pair, 15,000 lumens with the daylight running lights, that's 1,440 lumens, giving you a grand total of 16,440 lumens just off them two spotlights. Throw that thing into the mix, which is the V-Pro 5D, it's a red, green, blue, and true white high, uh, light bar. It has 30,000 lumens. Absolutely. It just lights up everything. Lights up the roads, lights up the fields, lights up the hedgerows. I've, uh, I've accidentally punished a few people this week um, by not turning them off quick enough. So I, I need to get the Orcs beam switches uh, install wait for them to be delivered actually so these are absolutely brilliant put these two and that together you don't need any other lights absolutely don't need any other lights this bottom row of mine don't need them anymore the surplus to requirement the fog lights now they, they cast shadows they don't cast all, any light that thing there them two lights absolutely blow these out the water so a little bit about these as well 60 uh ip rating is 68 so that means the weather in this country isn't gonna isn't gonna affect them you can basically submerge them and they'll still work the light bar now that there isn't just a floodlight it has 30 degrees of spotlight built into it as well 60 degrees of flood try to look into that to see if there was a diagram to show what it actually meant couldn't find what it meant but while I was on there, I started looking into what lumens actually mean. Because we all talk about lumens, and uh, we're all like, yeah, yeah, that's 10,000 lumens, that's 15,000 lumens. What does it actually mean? So one lumen is what one candle, the light that will be cast by one candle in a square metre. That's it, one lumen. Now, Orcs being claim that these spotlights at nearly 600 metres will give you one lumen. So 600 metres from the source, you'll be able to stand and read a book, basically, because one candle at one metre will allow you to read a book, won't it? So we'll put it to the test. I know the bright. I really do know the bright. But once we've got it all finished, I think that's a test we need to do. Anyway, if you like any of these products, I've got your discount code. Now, for the spotlights, it's CBV1. I'll put a little thing down there. Also, I'll put a link in the description. If you like the 52 inch light bar, that's CBV2. 15% off. You might as well take it if you're fancying new lights. Don't worry about the, uh, the fact that they're coming from abroad. There is a little bit of shipping tax on there. The delivery is quick. It takes a matter of days. When I talk to Oxbeam about these products, I get them within the same week. So basically, from the day of dispatch, I get them three, three to four days later. So there isn't a real big delay with them. It's not like ordering something from China where they take a couple of weeks to come. These things are here pretty quick. So let's crack on and show you how we got on with installing that and making these two work together. So I'm looking at putting a, a light bar on the front of the van. If I'm out here on top of the unit truck where it is now, it's too short and I don't want to drill through the front of the van. So I do want to mount it on the Unistrut and I need to extend it. So this is how you extend the Unistrut. You get one of these, this is a coupler. There's four screws in the bottom. 
and you basically slot it in. Aha, let me just, one of the screws isn't all the way back. So you basically just back all the screws off, slide it in 50% of the way. <laughs> right, so you get a screwdriver once it's halfway, which I think that is. You get a screwdriver, and if you watch, it'll lift up into here. Let's put a light on, I think. So watch this bit here. Let's just screw that all the way down. <laughs> Same at the back. There you go, that's your coupler in. Then you get your piece of Unistrut. You basically slide it along. And you do the same again. Get a little nip. And there you go, you've just extended your roof bar. Just like that one. <laughs> I'm happy with that. So I want my light bar to basically protrude from the end of this. So I want the bracket, I want it to sit about here. I think that'll look good. It'll allow air to move over and under and hopefully we won't get any whistling noise. So to make that happen, I've had to go off and make a couple of brackets. And this is what we've got here. So I just need to now add these onto there. So what I've got is, this is the bracket that come with it. This is a, a 90 degree bracket from B&Q, costs about three quid. And then we've got some Zebs. You know the Zebs work, they drop into that channel, spin round and lock into place. So let's give you a feel for how this is gonna look. And which way did I want it to go? Can't remember. I think it's maybe that way. Under there, like that. Let me show you. Push it to the side. So that sits under there. And as you tighten up this top bolt, that pinches, sandwiches itself into place. So that should be us. I think it's the wrong way around. I think that's for that side. Anyway. Let's pop this one in. So yeah, that will sit like that. And hopefully give us the look that we're going for. Now these brackets, although they look quite flimsy, they are really strong and that's why I went for them. I stood in BQ last night trying to trying to break them, for want of a better word. I tried my hardest to bend it, so if it doesn't work, we'll put something a little bit more substantial up there. But for now, that is going to achieve what I want it to. I may even put a, a square washer under there just to lift that up so it's it's in line with the bottom. Actually, that's what I'm going to do. And there you have it. Square washer in. That will also allow when we... Let's take that out of there. Zoom out a little bit. When we have the Unistrut in place, that will sit under there nice and snug as well. So that's the cap in that goes on the Unistrut. There is a bracket here for the awning. What I did last night is, rather than take it down, I just released all the brackets, pushed it back out of the way. So we also have this to light here, that mount here. This is one of my perimeter lights. These are so, so handy. But yeah, we're gonna mount that there after we adapt the bracket, because it doesn't need to stick out that far. So we're gonna, we're gonna pull that bracket in about 300. Uh, we're gonna pull that bracket in about 50 mil. I need to probably treat that. Yeah, we'll do something with that as well. We'll print the brackets. Won't do it this week, but we'll put it on our list to do. So yeah, we now need to go and have a look at the light. Mm, there's a little bit of movement there. I don't want that to flex like it is. Right, let's have a little look at that. Right, we've got rid of that bounce. Um, 
I just moved that back a little bit and it's, it's stopped it from moving anyway. Happy with that now. It'll look good. Right, we've got the bracket on. We've actually got the light bar on. So that's in position now. We're just setting everything else back up so we can slide it all back into position, bolt it up, light to fix on there, connection to do there, and then we've got to concentrate on doing the wiring for the aux beam. So that's <laughs> that's the bit that's gonna cause us a bit of pain, I think. But we'll get that sorted. Look at the size of that connection. So I mean, somebody from aux beam, surely to God has a way of getting making that smaller. Look at the size of it. Well, not everything <laughs> goes to plan round here. Bit of a rush on this morning. We're supposed to be travelling to uh, Sunflower Park this morning. Um, it's now nine o'clock and I'm having to reseal that. It broke away this morning as I pulled the cable through for the spotlights. Um, I was being a bit rough. So I've got that to do. It started to rain. Doesn't look like we're going to get to set off when we expect it to. So I'm going to have to give that at least an hour, two hours to cure, which is eating into our uh, you know, our travel time and our arrival time. So we can only play it by ear and hopefully we arrive on, you know, around about two, three o'clock this afternoon. But that is more important than getting there on time, I think. We need to keep the water out. So have a look at this. Sir. What do you think of my new Wi-Fi antenna? <laughs> I made that with scrap bit side line round last night. I, there's going to be a video about that anyway. Might even be this one. Right, we've uh, we've sealed that up. It's not the prettiest, but what I've done this time is I've lapped it up over. Um, so we sealed underneath, and then we've gone around and sealed on the outside. So that'll do. We'll tidy up that little bit later. Probably easier to leave that to go off before we sort it out. So now we're hour and it goes touch dry um, I'm gonna give you two hours that puts us probably an hour behind schedule um, so we'll see what we can do I don't want to start the day off rushing I don't want to start the day off stressed out so we're just gonna take it play it by ear load the van up and if we're ready for 10 which is an hour <laughs> we'll see we'll have a look at it but um, if we're not Gives us another hour to play with anyway. Got more jobs to do, so I need to get a wiggle on. Hi, if you're a regular viewer to the channel, please consider subscribing. It helps us immensely. Um, we run at about 60% of the people that watch my videos, and last week we got 16, 1700 people watching one of my videos. 60% of them are subscribers, and that really affects our channel. So if you wouldn't mind, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button, hit the bell and share it with your friends. If there's something we're doing that you find beneficial, maybe somebody else will find it beneficial. I don't mind you sharing this video in groups or uh, with friends. We're here to help people and hopefully get the, get the message out that there's easy ways to do things, there's cheap ways to do things. And sometimes we can save you a bit of money with discount codes. So we're back from Sunflower Park, but we have a bit of a problem. The light bar is creating so much noise, it's, uh, we can't really go above 60 miles an hour. So I've had a little look into it and uh, done a bit of thinking about where I've positioned it. And I probably didn't choose the right place. So all that aside, we need to go and change it all now, uh, reposition it. And uh, I'll show you how we're going to do that now. Now, I'm going to cut that down because I think that needs to be about well, three, four inches shorter. So let's go and have a play with that. Well, the light has beaten us. Well, very dark. <laughs> but uh, we're managing. So I'm just trying to get this roof connection done. Um, we are just going to sort that out tomorrow i just want to get all the final connections done test the light and then this i can fix down tomorrow it's too cold at the minute as well the ends of my fingers are numb 
So let's get this last one in, put the lid on it and see what it's like. So that's a finished article there. We just need to secure that tomorrow, tighten up all these glands properly. But as it is, it's just a temporary fix for tonight. Just see if it works. Well, we've got the brackets and the light back up. Um, what we've had to do is mount this bracket. I didn't want to lose this light. I've maybe said this before. I didn't want to lose this light. It's really important to us. It's part of the perimeter lighting and it really does come into its own in the winter and the dark nights. So the idea behind keeping it was really important. So what I've done is stepped that bracket back and I've moved this one so it's mounted on here now. We don't need another, another hole through there. I don't want to go weakening this bracket. But something we also did as well, we painted this a similar grey to the van. You can see the old uni strut there. Um, I really like this now, so I'm wondering whether I should paint the rest. But that's a massive job. So as it is for now, you can see over there, we've done that one too. Um, this light bar is now finished. That's the box that we put up last night. Need to secure that today, so I'll go and give that a wipe. And we'll stick some uh, we'll stick some tiger seal under there, some cigarflex. Put the spirit level on just to show you. Basically, as the wind hits here, it's going to travel up, and you need to clear basically the light bar. If you don't, you're going to get noise. So something I hadn't considered previously. So following the rule of the roof. I think that's about bang on now. So as the wind go, travels up, it'll roll around the roof and it should, in theory, just go straight over the light bar. Oh, I hit the front of it a little bit, but I can tell you, before, when it was stuck right out on the front, it was noisy, really noisy. Anything over 60 mile an hour, it sounded like a jet engine above you. So now we've pushed it back a good three inch. It's made a hell of a difference. Just trying to get out the wind. It's made a massive difference. So now we have it there, we've been up to 80 mile an hour and we've, we've had no noise. So that's us done by the testing now. Um, the wind's picking up, clouds are blowing in. So hopefully tonight we can get out and we can get some uh, good shots of this, this setup. I think it's gonna look awesome, I really do. Let me get that side stuck down before, before this bad weather kicks in. Big dirty clouds rolling in. Seagulls as well, so that means we're in for a bit of a battering. Just show you something else while I'm up here. So we've got 540 or 60 lots of solar there. I think we can squeeze another panel in here. What do you think? From about here? I think we could fit another one. Lemons are quite good, they bang out loads, so I might get another one of them. Um, might get a bigger one actually. I'll weigh up what can go in here dimension wise and we'll have a look what's on the market. Because in all honesty, I like, I would like a solar panel over the top of that, them penetrations as well, just to give it that extra little, little bit of um, protection, we'll call it. Yeah, she's looking good.
Well, that's the end of another video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've got so much out of these lights. I absolutely love them. I'm off to the drone doctor now, because uh, that drone didn't survive. <laughs> it's broke again. So, those of you that actually know me um, will know the trouble I've had with this drone. My last drone, not a problem. Never, ever had an issue with it. These Mavic Minis are, I don't know, they're just not very good. I don't like them. Um, I'm probably going to get this one fixed and sell it and go back to what I had before. The idea of having a Mini that I can take anywhere is a great idea, but when it, you can't control it, when it doesn't avoid things and it flies into things, what are you meant to do? What are you meant to do? That's the third time I've had this fixed now. Um, I've flown it five times. The first time I went out with it, it flew off into the... It tried to avoid a telegraph pole and it flew into a tree beside a river, five metres up. We had to knock it out with a stick. Riley says, I'll catch it, Dad. So he climbed out of the river bank. We got a big long staff that was five metres, knocked it out the tree. Riley stood back and just let it crash into the floor. But it survived that one. It nearly went in the river, but it survived. The next outing, we were at Van Life Festival. Um, and I was flying it and I didn't see the, uh, the phone lines. The last thing I saw on the image of the screen was my drone tumbling towards an ice cream van. Luckily, it landed about 10 metres away where nobody was. Um, my fault. Um, I was flying it where there was no people, so that was, a, that was a, a positive, but just shows you how easy an accident can happen with a drone. And on this occasion, basically, it didn't avoid a branch in the tree. It's got all this avoidance stuff on it, and it didn't see a branch in a tree. But I've had some trouble with this when we were at Van Man Tribe. Um, it wouldn't stabilise. And the other night when I was flying it, taking some of the shots, it would circle. It wouldn't stabilise. So when it was hovering, it was circling. Anyway, it's dead. It's on its way to Drone Hospital to get fixed. Um, we send it straight back to DJI. They will refurbish it and send me another one. Hopefully this one's better. Maybe third time third fourth time lucky but anyway thanks for watching remember if you want discounted prices for these we've got two codes we've got cbv1 and cbv2 that'll get you 15 percent off now if the links aren't working bear with me drop me a line and i will get them sorted out these aren't my links they're aux beams i've tried them a couple of times they weren't working when i first got them they're working now so hopefully they're up there and they're running, but if anybody gets a problem when they try and use them, let me know in the comments and I will get on and get it sorted. But anyway, thanks for watching. We're patiently waiting because Auxbeam have got some new van headlights. They've got some uh, replacement lamps, so they're on the way. We're going to try them. I'm just, uh, I'm just looking for a light meter. If anybody's got a light meter, shout up because I want to use it. I want to prove how bright these lights are now. Um, if not, I'll have to buy one, but it is what it is. It might be, might be on the Christmas list, because I've got this drone to pay for. But anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again. Take care. Why not head over and check out our new website, www.thecraftyblinders.co.uk. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and our Facebook group, The Crafty Blinder Van Builds. Thanks for watching.